All right. So um, talking about the slope of stability today with Midas uh, GTS. All right. So we're going to have an overview and then uh, showing you the model and running the different type of uh, analysis. Let me... Okay. Now you guys can see the screen. All right. So uh, in general, uh, the reason we are doing this slope of stability is to find out if a um, part of a bank of soil is stable enough or not for different type of um, loading or um, situation. Like when we have the groundwater, when we have external loading added to the structure or the ground, or when we have the earthquake. So uh, this uh, instability may happen uh, based on the self-weight or any, any uh, external loads. So technically, when the shear stresses, which comes from the other sources, uh, goes beyond the shear strength of the, uh, that particle of soil, uh, definitely we're going to have the shear failure. So we are checking exactly this one. So there are different methods for uh, doing the analysis and find out if this, um, this ground is stable or is not. So um, the well-known methods are finite element methods and uh, also uh, conventional traditional methods called LEM or limit equilibrium methods. So the, uh, the LEM method is technically based on the um, slices where we uh, come up with some assumptions and uh, divide the ground uh, or the uh, slope uh, into smaller pieces and then doing some um, uh, simple analysis and finding out the shears and then uh, based on those we calculate the safety factors. So uh, the final destination or final uh, purpose of these uh, analysis for slope stability analysis is to find out the safety factors to see if it's uh, good enough and if it's uh, you know uh, satisfies the design codes or not. Then we have uh, uh, other methods um, like SAM which is stress analysis method uh, in this method, the liquid, uh, equilibrium, uh, sorry, limit equilibrium method is applied uh, to a state of stress in static equilibrium co uh, computed using a nonlinear finite element. So it's a kind of combination of the finite element and those um, conventional methods. And then we have the finite element method, uh, which we call it SRM or stress um, uh, strength reduction method, and uh, that's uh, technically based on the uh, finite element modeling. Okay, so uh, this is what we discussed. If we have like this part of ground, like uh, uh, like a slope shape, uh, it can uh, fail based on the you know uh, slope uh, failure surface, and uh, the sh uh, shear stress is goes beyond the shear strength, and then we got the failure. And this is the slope. Uh, sorry, the safety factor that we calculate would be um, s divided by t, so strength divided by uh, the uh, existing stress to calculate the safety factor. All right. So this is this diagram showing you how the uh, LEM method works. So uh, most of the uh, conventional software uh, are using the LEM method, which is pretty basic and uh, uh, but you know giving you a good result. Therefore, uh, is very popular amongst the uh, geotechnical engineers. But uh, you know in the uh, LEM method, it just gives you the safety factor, it's okay, but you really cannot investigate local failure or displacement. So it's not, uh, it has really so much uh, limitation. And then there are a lot of assumptions are coming into equations, and then it can make your design uh, pretty conservative and uh, sometimes not cost effective. So uh, you sometimes need to use better tools or more accurate tools to calculate them. Then again, we have the uh, finite element methods like a SRM method, uh, in which the uh, we calculate. Imagine it's starting by um, strength uh, line, and then we just uh, by the uh, try and error going down and down until this uh, line is reaching the this more circle, and then uh, that's the point of the um, failure. So based on that, we can simply calculate the, the safety factor. 
and finally when we got the safety factors then uh, we can compare them with the um, you know what code requires us and uh, then we can see this uh, completely depends on the code what you are using and then in a different uh, situation definitely different safety factors are required so these examples are from the I mean uh, US code so uh, that's a general information about the uh, um, slope stability analysis now what I, uh, I prepared for you is that uh, I got this tutorial where we have this embankment here and this is slope. Uh, I want to run a, I mean, model a 3D uh, model for you, mesh it, and uh, then run the uh, slope stability analysis. In Midas GTS, you have option for doing the uh, slope stability both for 2D and 3D. Okay? Uh, for 3D, uh, you can only use the finite element uh, analysis because uh, what we um, just talked about about the LEM method LEM method is limited to 2D analysis so uh, we in Midas GTS we also use it for 2D analysis and we'll, we'll go with the SAM or stress analysis method while um, um, for 3D we only go with the finite element methods and then you see how the result look like. So this will be the, our final um, destination or final uh, model and what I do um, I will start modeling this one by one uh, I mean step by step and starting from scratch defining the material property defining the geometry I will show you um, how you can uh, control the mesh size uh, for example if you see here we have smaller mesh or finer mesh around this area and then we have coarse mesh uh, outside. So I show you how to control the mesh. I will show you how to uh, create any type of geometry. So here we have intersection of these two type of geometry and how to apply the boundaries and how to set up the analysis. Uh, again, if you got any questions, please just stop me and uh, let's discuss it in more detail. Okay, so let me just open the a new uh, GTS and um, again if you want to go into 2D uh, Midas GTS a good thing about Midas GTS is both 2D and 3D are in the same package and then you can uh, use them uh, use either one that is more suitable to your project okay so uh, let me start uh, creating the geometry so for now uh, we have the uh, 3D model Okay, so um, whatever we have, um, when we model in the model view, you can see them in under the uh, tree menu. So we have three tabs uh, for whom are new to the Midas GTS. I'm just uh, trying to explain as much as, as, much as I can. Um, uh, so uh, you, we have three tabs, mode, model, analysis, and post. So the model will be whatever we do the modeling. Analysis is for loads boundary conditions and uh, analysis and then post will be for um, results. So uh, we start with the uh, model. So first of all let me uh, set up my uh, unit. So I want to put it set it up to the um, SI unit. So I go with the clean Newton and uh, uh, meter. Okay. And uh, the, I will share this tutorial with you so you can uh, practice it yourself as well if you um, are interested. Alright, so we can go to the properties. So I see a question uh, from Gizel says, um, what about the mesh uh, until how many number of lines can I create? Um, uh, there is no limitation on the number of mesh or a uh, number of lines that you want to use, I mean number of lines for creating the geometry and number of mesh for meshing your uh, structure, uh, your uh, model. So uh, I don't have any exact uh, number for you, there is no limitation for that actually. Okay. 
So let me define some um, uh, attributes. So we go to the ground uh, solid and add. Uh, this time I'm trying to uh, make a clay. Find the material. Calling matte clay. And uh, we can enter the uh, modulus of elasticity as one point one point five e to the power five and Poisson ratio zero point five is okay. Unit weight twenty kilonewton and um, saturated uh, unit weight again 20 kilonewton for cohesion I go with the let me select the more coulomb cohesion I go with the 20 and uh, friction angle of 30 degrees All right, so for now, let's go with the, um, um, sorry, more Coulomb, and just keep it as this. All right, so I defined the uh, map foundation here. Now I go with the drain, and uh, for the uh, tension, uh, tensile strength, I uh, want to just give some number, like 1 to the e to 7 kilonewton per square meter, and OK. All right, so my more Coulomb is uh, uh, created. Now I call it clay. All right, and uh, okay. So now, uh, first we created a one um, uh, created one uh, attribute. So we're gonna use them when we go into the uh, modeling. All right. So now uh, I wanna create those ge that geometry. What I do, I first create it in two D and then extrude it into three D. So this is very easy. If you guys have the um, uh, let's say the section in two D or three D in AutoCAD. So you can simply save it as DXF file, and then here you can go to the file, import, and then uh, you know DXF 2D and 3D. All of, both of them are available. So you can just simply let's say 2D. You just click on that and select the DXF file and import it. It's that easy. But here I don't have that. So uh, what I do, I start uh, uh, creating the geometry. Oh, Gizel again, um, uh, Gizel ask a question again, how many blocks of finite element can I create? Um, so you can have as many as you want. So we call them mesh. Uh, you can mesh the uh, solid plate element or line element, uh, all three type of finite elements. And again, there is no limitation on a number of them. But the more that you, uh, you now create, definitely your model going to be heavier and takes more time to uh, mm, uh, it takes more time to, you know, run the analysis. All right, so let me start creating the geometry. So uh, for that, I go to the 2D, so I can simply click on this and creating uh, 3D. Okay, that's fine, in the Z direction. Uh, so I start uh, going with the polyline for 2D. So uh, click on that. As I said, I'm going to create the 2D first and then extend it to 3D. I ensure that the dimension is on the meter. So uh, I start with the location 0 and 0, then enter. And then you see the method automatically changes to relative. But if you want to apply the, uh, the next node, if you, not, you know the exact coordinate of that node, you can go with the absolute. Uh, or you can go with the relative if you want to just uh, relatively give the distance from this point. So I, I'm going with the relatives, so therefore I'm putting on the uh, uh, relative. So the next point would be 47 in the x direction, 
and 0. So for entering the dimensions for x and y, you can enter either enter comma, uh, comma or just a space. Enter. Then again, 0 and 5. So we are going up. Then again, uh, negative 15 and 0. Enter. Negative 20 and 10. Enter. Negative 12 and 0. Enter. 0 and negative 15. Enter. All right. Uh, so uh, this is created. And close it. And if I go to the disk view, you can see that uh, my base uh, geometry is uh, created. Now, uh, if I go to the 3D view, you see, still see that this is in a, um, a 2D model. So I have to just uh, extrude it into 3D. So to uh, extrude it, I can simply go to the I can simply go to the um, you know, solid and then click on this option uh, extrude. Select the extrude profile. You can set it up on the wire because uh, whatever we created here is only wire as of now. And then select the extrusion uh, direction. I can simply uh, select the Z direction because I know that I'm going into the uh, this plane. So it's going to be that direction. And now uh, the length will be 25. Before you uh, hit OK or apply, uh, you can just get the preview. So this icon here, this icon here, if you click on that, it shows you that how the uh, final shape going to be. So this is exactly what I wanted. So I can simply enter it. So and I can uh, give it a name, let's say model 1 and OK. All right, so I uh, so far I created a uh, 3D geometry. So if this uh, grid line also is in your way and doesn't it does block your view, you can simply click on this and it goes away. All right. Check the question. All right, uh, Gizel, you asked what other files. So you can go to the file and then in the import, you can see all different type of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, <coughs> formats that you can import into uh, Midas. So uh, uh, I can tell you uh, later on, we can just go through them um, uh, one by one and tell you which one is good for uh, what. All right. So uh, the next step would be uh, creating that uh, edge here. So for that one, I start uh, changing the, my working plane. So we have one option called working plane, uh, which as you can see here, this is the grid line. And um, that actually helping me to uh, in the modeling. So um, if I want to do use any of these curves in the 2D uh, or selecting any nodes in 2D, I should be in the working plane. So what can I do? I can simply switch the working plane in a different location just to locally work on that, uh, um, you know, location. So that's really making my life easier. And uh, the point is we are not changing the global coordinate system or lo uh, the local coordinate system. We are just changing the um, um, working plane. So how to change the working plane? For example, I want to work in top of this, um, um, you know, slope. What can I do? I can simply click on this option, move working uh, work plane, and I can select it three points. Point one will be the center of this, point two will be here, and point uh, three will be right here. So technically point one to point two, get the preview, this is exactly what I want, and OK. So this time if I click on this, it just take me to the top of the page. OK. So um, let's uh, move on and do create some uh, working plane again. So you can uh, technically use these options here, use these icons from, let's say, curve, surfaces, and solid, or you can go through the uh, main menu, uh, either one you feel more comfortable with. So let me just work with the, uh, um, you know, main menu, then you have options, you see that how different options could be used in the uh, software. So I go to the geometry, and then curve, and then create a working plane, and then polyline, 
uh, or the wire. Okay. I select that. That's exa exactly the same thing that uh, I used here. So by clicking one icon over here, you have to go different path. It's all uh, depends on you. All right. So let me start this again. Uh, this time I will start from negative 2.5 because I know that's the uh, right middle of my point and say enter and put the <clears throat> so the next part will be 2.5 and negative 10 enter the next one will be 2.5 and 10 enter and finally negative 5 and 0 enter okay cancel and uh, this one is created I can go to the 3d view and then see that there is an uh, additional uh, curve created here so now uh, what can I do I can just uh, extrude it again all right I'm going to the solid and extrude and uh, we can simply select the uh, wire uh, you see I'm changing the options from this uh, menu but uh, whenever you come in here I mean uh, you need to select something so it could be a wire it could be a edge it could be a face it could be a solid it could be a mesh based on the type of um, function that you are using at that time um, the corresponding or the you know uh, available options for you will be listed here so for example in this method for extrude I can select either face or wire or edges uh, at this point I have wire because I have like a enclosed edges so it, we call it wire so I select wire then I can select this triangle all right and uh, then we can select the um, uh, extrude direction if you remember the other time I just selected the Z direction because we were just going exactly perpendicular to the face now this time I selected two points because uh, I'm gonna come from here to here and then um, that's a different uh, direction so let me select the first point right here second point in the middle of this page and uh, you can adjust the length for that check the uh, preview and say OK alright so far I just made uh, this one as well so I can just see um, 3d view I got uh, this one so far but um, please consider that these two are two separate solid now because uh, if you want to see uh, how that one is uh, embedded in this one you can just right click on that and go to the display mode and for example put it on a wireframe so you see that this is my uh, uh, main slope and this is the other edge and as you can see this is kinda inside that but they are not connected so the next step for us is to make that uh, connection happen and then make them as a one um, unit system all right so to do to make this connection uh, we can use this option called fuse so if you are in a solid tab you can click on the fuse and then the you know you can fuse these two solids solid one which we call it master solid and then the uh, boolean tool and you can get the preview uh, it's gonna be exactly the same thing merge faces and okay all right so now you see when I'm selecting this everything uh, will be selected to each other together and if I go and hide the I will put it on a wireframe you see that these two are uh, exactly the same um, model all right shading and edges all right so so far so good now we are done with the creating the geometry so steps in Midas GTS is uh, most of the time first we create the geometry uh, in 2d or 3d then the next step is uh, uh, start meshing so for meshing we need material property ground properties and uh, you know if you have any you know structural property like a beam or pile or something then you can also assign it to the um, I mean uh, mesh it and then model it in your model okay so next step uh, will be meshing for meshing, um, you remember in the first model that I showed you, uh, we had different, um, you know, mesh size. 
let me bring it here again look at this in the middle we have smaller uh, or finer mesh and then the outer side we have like a coarse mesh so how to do that um, there is a very simple steps we need to define the um, you know mesh size all around the these uh, edges so for that reason I go to the top view and uh, let me select different uh, part of the structure going to the auto mesh and map mesh so as I said again all these options are available for you from the main menu as well so it depends on how do you feel uh, more comfortable with the modeling so you can go to the mesh and then you now control mesh size and all those but I feel more comfortable if I come to the uh, auto mesh and then select the uh, options from here okay so I, I go with the edge mesh sizes select the edges I select this edge mm, let me see how we're going to make it okay so um, and then there are different methods for um, uh, you know applying these uh, 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 mesh sizes let me show you as of now I want to just go with the internal uh, uh, interval length which means the exact length of these elements so I put the 1.5 Alright, so um, uh, let me just uh, go with the uh, linear um, grading and then select these two elements, select the edge, will be this one and this one. So I start from uh, 1.5 at the left and then uh, to the right will be 3.5, get the preview okay apply and the same thing I do for this part from here to here uh, I go with the 1.5 and 3.5 get the preview and uh, apply and now uh, for the um, this uh, edge here right right there I just select a linear interval select these guys this, 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 and this as 1.5. Okay? And, okay. Alright, so we mesh these, and then the rest of them, we have option to, uh, you know, uh, control them, control the mesh, or just leave them as they are. Because later on, also, we have option to create those, uh, you know, give the, assign those uh, sizes to them. I will show you how. So, okay. Uh, to complete the mesh, you have a couple of options. You have uh, for solid, you have auto mesh, you have map mesh, and you have uh, uh, edge volume mesh. So for now, I want to use the uh, map mesh, uh, sorry, uh, auto mesh. So for that one, this will make it so easy for me. Select the solid, this that part, and then um, dividing the size, I said I go with the size 4 and this is the attribute that we just defined but here's the thing if you forgot to uh, define your uh, solid or uh, in case that or in case that uh, uh, you um, uh, you didn't assign this attribute you can simply define it here just right click on this uh, um, click on this option define it here define the material everything is ready for you so just one one thing I gotta do some changes here because the direction of the uh, edges wasn't good so let me just uh, change the delete mesh control for so when I'm uh, selecting this Okay, and then send that show me the 
uh, Mesh said, I see that these seedings are not um, as I was expecting. I was expecting the other way. So uh, that's why I'm trying to um, just uh, change that. So going to the Mesh and the Mesh Control. So okay, I can delete this. I can delete the other one. All these uh, meshes along the all right, and uh, finally this one. All right, so I can again I leave the rest of them uh, as they are, and then again I go ahead, uh, go with the internal. Left will be 3.5, and this one will be 1.5. Select the edge. Okay, and then let me get the preview. All right, that's what I'm what I want because. You know, this time I have like a smaller or finer mesh around the uh, this um, edge here, so that's exactly what I'm uh, looking for. So apply, and this time the other way. So again, the direction is that side. So what I do, I just change the direction, 1.5 and 3.5. So the good thing is you can simply uh, uh, visually see what you are uh, you are doing here, and if there is something wrong, you can simply change them. All right, so this is done. Let's go to the uh, auto mesh again. Select the solid and select the size as four. Uh, attribute is clay, and I call it um, practice one. Check it. Everything is good and okay. All right, my model is meshed, and as uh, I showed you in the beginning, so now is the time to apply the uh, ground supports and uh, you now set up the analysis. All right. So uh, to set up the ground, um, you can simply go to the analysis tab here and uh, use one of these options. So here you have the supports where you can simply select the mesh sets uh, in you know select the nodes on the mesh and then uh, give some. Uh, uh, degrees of freedom or constraints of the degrees of freedom and then assign it. This is one way. There's another way uh, which I prefer it and is make it easier. It's uh, using the ground support. If you click on the ground support, it automatically considers all the mesh sets in the model. Here we have only one, so uh, everything is okay. And then apply. Oh, let me define the uh, boundary set. I call it support and okay so by the ground support it automatically applies the uh, you know uh, relevant um, supports to the uh, locations that is required alright so uh, it just done everything quickly and I don't need to be worry about um, any of those alright so let me turn it off whatever you don't want to see you can just simply uncheck it and it's, uh, it goes away all right, so uh, we are done with the support also. Now is the time for defining the self-weight. Uh, sorry, the, all the loads that applies, uh, including the self-weight. Again, when you are in the analysis, you can simply select the self-weight. The icon is here. I call it self-weight. And always the self-weight in 3D uh, analysis is in a uh, Z direction and is a negative one because it goes downward. Uh, but by the way, you can always see the global coordinate system in the right bottom corner, so you understand that this is the Z direction upward. So we got apply negative one. When it comes to the 2D, uh, normally the I mean the 2D uh, in GTS is in the X Y plane. So always for the self uh, self weight, we go negative one in the Y Y direction. But here it's uh, 3D, so always negative 1 in the Z direction. Alright, so the self weight is also created. Now uh, let's uh, set up the uh, analysis cases. So uh, technically here we are uh, running the slope stability on this uh, model for the self weight. Again, the analysis, uh, you can go to the analysis and then analysis cases or you can just simply click on that option here. Add See what options do I have here? 
we have two options uh, slope stability SRM which is strength, uh, strength reduction method or SAM which uh, is uh, kind of um, similar to LEM method a combination with the uh, finite element for uh, the SAM method is available for uh, 2D analysis so um, for 3D as I mentioned in the beginning we have to go with the uh, SRM or finite element method which is pretty accurate method but uh, it takes uh, a little bit longer time to perform the analysis. But the result is very accurate and very reliable, way more than uh, what you can see by LEM methods. Okay, so I selected this, I call it uh, SRM. And uh, then always we have to control our analysis um, setup. So right in front of the slope stability uh, SRM, we have option for analysis control. Click on that and it gives you the option to select the maximum number of trial because you know finite element method is a trial uh, method. So you can simply select this uh, maximum number of iterations and uh, yeah, all these are good and say OK. Initial water level we can set it up as a, a zero. Okay. All right, that's done. Now uh, you see uh, whatever we modeled here, the mesh set is showing up here. I call it practice one, right? So you can simply drag it and drop it here. Again, for the boundary, we define the support. I can drag and drop it here. And the load cases is a self where I can drag and drop it here. But uh, not always you need to drag and drop these things because uh, if you check these uh, options on the analysis model, always the initial element and initial boundaries by default all of them are selected so um, doesn't matter if you act I mean bring these two guys in the right um, activation uh, box or not because they are already selected but if you want you can just simply do that it um, doesn't hurt and then for the load um, we just added the self weight so if you have any additional loads or surcharge loaders, loads so you can simply add them as well Okay, we are ready uh, for this one analysis cases is uh, set up and uh, now we can just uh, perform the analysis, I mean run the analysis and uh, get the results. So for that I can just hit the run and select it and say okay. But um, as I said, the uh, 3D uh, slope stability analysis is a time consuming uh, uh, analysis. Uh, so it takes time to run the model, so to save time. I have the model uh, analyzed for you, so let me just bring it up and then together we check the uh, uh, results. By the way, if you have any questions for me, please uh, type it in and I will be answering those. Okay, so this is the model, this is exactly the model that we got and uh, uh, let's go to the result. So this was analysis and now we're going to the post uh, option. Uh, post tab for the results. Okay, um, let's check the uh, result. First of all, when you come to the result, uh, you see that uh, there is a, a factor of safety provided for you always when you when we do the response um, sorry slope stability we get the safety factor because that's what uh, at the end of the day we need so you see for this model the uh, safety factor is 1.58 so um, it seems that is good enough actually depends on um, the code or the situation but um, it's at least above 1.5 so it's pretty good if you want to check different uh, 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 things on this model for example a strain so strain probably is important. You can understand that the wear uh, has the largest strain. Um, so technically strain in this model shows the displacement of those um, elements. So we can somehow we understand that wear might have uh, has the most possibility for uh, failure. All right, so you can check them in the different directions. All right, and if you want to see them in a, um, different shapes, for example here, um, you can go to the post common, change them. For example, you want to see the mesh sets. You can see exactly what's going on here. And then the gradient to make it more smooth. 
if you want to cut through you can um, simply uh, use this or just you know using the ISO surfaces show you exactly which surfaces have the same uh, amount of stress for uh, strain for example and if you want to see the deformed and undeformed shape so you can simply uh, select it uh, or just deformed or undeformed and you can give the scale factor to um, let's say see it better say apply or maybe something larger than that so kind of you see that uh, how is the deformation all right by applying this uh, increasing the uh, slope sorry the scale factor all right so um, this is what we get from the um, slope stability analysis so I see a question okay um, I see that you guys uh, have the microphone uh, installed just let me uh, open it um, Gizel can you hear me now hello Gizel can you hear me now yes okay perfect so uh, yeah go ahead and ask your question what uh, what do you mean by how many uh, more layers we can create For example, uh, if, I ha if I have uh, another kind of soil, um, how create? Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, let's say here we just model everything in one layer. This is your question. Let's say if, for example, you have clay on top and then you have sand in bottom, something like that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, pretty easy. Let me just uh, open the other model for you. It's uh, very easy to create such a model. So let me just uh, delete the mesh. Uh, go into the mesh and delete this part. All right. But still, I have the geometry ready. So solid, come back. Uh, so what I do, I just uh, create ad an additional layer for you in the bottom of this page, and then uh, you know apply two different layers. Is this what you're looking for? Yes. Okay, sure. Um, so let me make that one. Uh, we go to the surface. Oh, let me go with the curve, uh, creating one from here. Oops. 3D line from here to, for example, here. We we'll go from here. Oops. Again, 3D line from here to here, for example. Okay. And then I'm going to extrude that one. Solid, extrude it, extrude the edge this edge and go 25 oh 5 if you remember the size was uh, about 5 and I call it layer select the direction I go with the Z direction and that's okay I select it. So now what I can do, I can just divide the solid with this uh, plate. So I go to the divide solid, I select this and I select uh, the surface, that surface and all right, say so, okay. So now you see I have uh, two different parts of um, uh, uh, solid. Okay. Mm 
No. Three points here, here, and there. And do the original shape, do the tool shape. Okay. And okay. All right. Now we got two models. Now if I go to the solid, um, I have two different models. So I, this is one part. So I assume this part is, for example, the clay. And then in the bottom part, I have different layer and this part also different layers. So um, let me just define different. Uh, go to the auto mesh and uh, creating the mesh. For example, this part in the top, I select it. I give it the size 4. All right. And before that, I'm going to just ensure that they are, they are, there is nodal connectivity because whenever you have two solids or more solids that intersecting each other, you have to ensure that they, are, they have a um, uh, duplicated surface to each other because if you don't, uh, later on you come up with the problem um, that you know there is no nodal connectivity between those um, elements. So for that one, let me go to the solid and uh, check the duplication and apply. And you see that there are duplication here, so I feel uh, safe now. I can go uh, go ahead and check them. If you want to see what I mean exactly, let me put it on the wireframe. If I click on that, check duplicate and apply. This is you see these uh, uh, yellow uh, surface. The yellow surface means between the top uh, solid and bottom solid, that surface is shared. So it means. Any type of uh, mesh that the top one has in the border, they, it's going to share exactly the same thing with the bottom one. All right, I don't want to make it that complicated, so uh, let's do it quickly. All right. All right. um, okay, so we go to the auto mesh and uh, select auto mesh again, uh, auto mesh solid, select the solid, I select the top one, top part, going with the uh, dimension of four, and this time I'm selecting the clay for top and call it clay. All right, check it, everything is fine, and apply. All right, this part is done. Now for the bottom part, let me, I want to define a different material. Let's say I'm defining a sand. All right. And uh, for the material, add it. I call it sand. Let's go with the uh, these uh, values that we got here. And uh, I mean by default values because this is just for um, sake of the presentation. And OK. This time I call it sand. And as you see, I'm using a different material. Uh, I mean ground properties for that. Select and uh, then uh, check it. Everything is fine. I can go even with a smaller size. Let's say go with the size two. Isn't that good? Four. All right, and uh, say okay. All right, so I have two layers of uh, uh, soil. All right, one of them is sand. One of them is cl uh, clay. And now if I go to the analysis, uh, when I'm just uh, setting up this SRM analysis, as you can see, I have two different, uh, uh, two different uh, mesh sets. One is clay, one is sand. So this time I have to activate both of them to ensure that both of them are working together and activated in the model, in the analysis. Okay? Does it answer your question? Uh, in the case that I have a uh, water level, uh, how is it in this case? It, it's what, sorry, I didn't understand. Would you please repeat that? Uh, water level, what about this? Oh, for water level, here we just uh, define that, you remember? Uh, here we can define the water level, let's say one meter, it goes uh, one meter from the uh, point of origin or zero, zero that we defined here and say OK, it's going to define that. So uh, when we're defining the material property, we're giving two, uh, I mean, both uh, for the dry material and also saturated material. OK, so the software can um, um, understand that point. And uh, the water level also 
can, if you want to see the effect of the water, that's also possible in the analysis. If you want to see, for example, pore water pressure, how it affects the analysis, uh, you can get those uh, from the uh, from seepage analysis and then uh, you now uh, bring them in here and then use those pore water pressure. Uh, so, um, and uh, is there any questions for me uh, which I can answer or are you guys just discussing with each other? No, okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, so, um, in terms of modeling and, you know, meshing and then changing your mesh set or if you want to change the material property, that's very easy. Uh, we can do that. I can show you in the, um, you know, different tutorials. But for now, I prepared um, other uh, models for you, uh, you know, which because I really didn't know what exactly you do for your project, what type of project you have. So, I prepared uh, different type of project to you know um, match more with your work. So in this model, um, I have different layer of soil as you can see. So uh, and also we have anchor bolts. You see this? Uh, sorry, the nailing. These nails you see here. You see them here. So they are like a nail the soil to the uh, rock behind that. All right. So all this is also done. And then I run the uh, room again slope stability analysis and got the result. For example, safety factor came up to be 1.36. So all the steps is exactly the same as the other one, but the point is in this model I gone with the um, you know, 2D analysis. So just uh, uh, that's the only difference. But you can simply model them as a 3D similar to what I showed you. And uh, I got one more model for you, this one. Uh, this is a, again in the 2D uh, uh, analysis. We have different soil layers, and uh, uh, what, what we have here, uh, I use the uh, SAM method. As you can see, SAM for uh, you know two different methods of SAM with the polygon and with the circles. I mean, circle up circles or polygons which represent the failure surfaces, and. Uh, you know, I can show you those, and also with the SRM. And you see that the uh, safety factors are provided for all three methods, and they are pretty much uh, similar and very close to each other. So it shows the, you know, um, you can check the accuracy of models with different methods. And uh, if I show you, for example, for the circular, we use um, this me me method. Let me just turn this off so you can see them better. So uh, this was the area possibility that these guys uh, go, uh, sorry, there is uh, failure surfaces. And when it comes to the polygon, this will be the failure surfaces and two and three. So the possib possibilities that uh, they happen is shown here. All right. So um, as I said, the, these, uh, these methods are available for you. In GTS, you can model both in 2D and 3D and uh, you know completely depends on the type of project that you have and what exactly you are looking for for the um, outputs. So uh, if you have any question for me or you want to see a, a certain uh, uh, output please let me know and uh, I just show you show those to you. Any uh, I have any que uh, one question. Sure, go uh, ahead, please. Uh, in this case, uh, you draw uh, the the structure, but if I wanna import, uh, what can I do? You wanna import from DXF, for example, from AutoCAD. Yes. Okay. So uh, let me just quit this model. 
and I prepared actually one uh, model for you. So uh, let's say this is you started the project. You wanna import the model from AutoCAD. So what you do, you can just go to the file, import, and select DXF. So the DXF that I have is 2D actually. So I select it, select AutoCAD 2D, and I go with the desktop and then GTS for DXF. So I select um, main and apply and this one shows up here and then say OK. So I have my edges here and the curves here. OK. And then I can work with it um, anyhow that I want it. So this was a tunnel project actually. So you see the tunnel opening with the anchor bolts. OK. So if I want to extrude this, if I want to make it 3D, so I can simply do exactly the same thing that I showed you earlier. Is it clear? Acá le asignas a cada estrato, o sea, a cada tipo de suelo igual. No diferencia, pues, o sea, que tenemos que entiendo tu pregunta. Uh, just, uh, is this, uh, I mean, uh, is this answer to your questions or I misunderstood? Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the case of 3D. Okay, okay. So I don't have a 3D model to open it for you, but if you guys have any 3D AutoCAD, uh, please send it over to me, I open it for you, it's very easy. Is exactly the same thing that I did here. But uh, the point is, uh, in AutoCAD, you have to save the file as DXF format. Because AutoCAD itself is a DWG format, but you have to save it as DXF. Only DXF or yes. also DWG? No, DWG, we can't open it. Uh, because DX, DXF is a global... Um, format that all the structural and geotechnical software um, I mean are mostly um, uh, ca can communicate with so uh, it should be DXF for format okay and then the point is you can also save them as a different uh, in a different layers okay Okay, so for example, I want to extrude this solid extrude. I select the wire for edges. Yeah, you can select them all and then extrude it like a 200. The direction will be this one. Um, 200 is a lot. So what I do, I just go with the ten. All right, and okay. So you see, I can create uh, such a thing if I want to make it 3D. But if I don't want to uh, make a uh, 3D, I mean, I, for example, this was the edges. I didn't want to select those edges. So let me just make this. All right, and then uh, 10 and apply. The direction will be this one. 
okay and okay. All right, so this will be my uh, technically my um, you know tunnel. So I just uh, didn't exclude extrude all of these. So this one is just missing. So you see, you can just bring in the uh, 1D and then make them as a face or make them as like a 3D, completely solid, and um, use them um, in your project. But if you have your 3D model in AutoCAD, that's also very simple. You can simply uh, import it here. Uh, as I said, if you guys share your um, uh, 3D uh, AutoCAD file with me as a DXF file, I can just import it for you. That's very easy. All right. Do you have more questions for me? Uh, no. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, this uh, I 